Welcome to Embedded Talks. In this video, we are going to talk about firmware security for ESP32. Further on in this video, I will talk about why firmware security matters, how to set up secure boot for your own ESP32 devices. We will discuss secure boot 1, secure boot version 2, and different parameters regarding the both version of secure boot. Why firmware security matters? Most engineers check if the device works, but after it is out in the world, that's not enough. Is your code safe? Can someone change it? Can they skip your data? If the answer is yes, your device is not safe. Some ports give full access like JCAG and or UART. If they are open, your code is not safe. If the updates are not locked, someone can send fake ones and keep control. No signs, no checks, then anyone can run bad code on your device. One weak spot can break the whole system. People trust your work. That trust is hard to win and easy to lose. So lock your code, lock your port, lock your updates. Don't wait until it's too late. The secure book in ESP32 is a multi-stage process. First, we have a first stage bootloader, then we have a second stage bootloader, and then we have application code validated by bootloader. It works by creating a chain of trust. First stage bootloader verifies the second stage bootloader. Second stage bootloader verifies your application code. When the ESP32 resets, the first stage bootloader initializes the hardware. It then uses a hardware random number generator to generate a 256 bit key. That key is stored in e use block 2. Using this key, a digest of bootloader at offset 0x0 is created. Once the digest is written, a special e 2 script called ABS done is permanently burned. This locks the in the secure boot. After this setup, every time the device resets, the ROM checks if the secure boot is enabled. If, it's, if it is, the ROM will computer computes the digest and compare it to the stored one. If they match, the boot process continue. If they don't, the chip halt. Once the first stage bootloader verifies the second stage bootloader, the second stage bootloader runs. This bootloader has public key built into it. It uses this key to check the digital signature of the rest of the system like partition cable and the main app. The app itself is signed using a private key which is kept safe and not stored on ESP32. So even if someone tries to change the app in flash, the ESP32 won't run it unless the signature is correct. This is how a secure boot works. It's a multiple change process for having multiple steps and multiple stages. The first stage bootloader verifies the second stage bootloader and second stage bootloader verifies the app. To enable secure boot, we will first open the ESP32 menu config, then go to security features. From there, we will check this, enable the secure boot in bootloader. Then we will <clears throat> see in which mode we want to secure the bootloader. We have two options one time flash and give flashable. One time flash mode in one time flash mode, the ESP32 generates a unique 256 bit key on first boot and locks it in. This is RDA for production. Once the bootloader is flashed, it can never be changed and <clears throat> it, it can never be changed in flash. It can never be changed. By contrast, reflashable mode that lets you supply your own book trigger key. RDF drives the binary key from your signing key, burns it into digest, burns the burn its digest into EQs, and you can generate book trigger image and their digest as needed. In practice, one time mode is recommended for shipping devices, while reflashable mode is handy during development or prototyping. Um, after selecting the eFlashable bootloader mode, we will go back and we will uncheck this so that the binaries are not signed during the build process. And we, we will provide our own key here. Or I will say my key name is key.pem. And that is all for secure boot version 1. Then we will go to partition cable and we will offset our partition cable at. 0x1 
four zeros. That is all for ESP32 to book one. After setting up the menu config, if I try to run the ESP IDF build, it will fail because it will ask for the key file. We will now create a key file with the ESP secure command. The key file has been created. We will now run ESP RDF bootloader to sign our bootloader. This gives us error because it is looking for the key to secure the bootloader. And we can generate do that by using this command. Here I will change the name to our key file that we generated earlier using ESP secure command. Once that is done, we can rerun the command and hopefully it will build. To enable secure boot version 2, we will go to component config and from there we will go to hardware settings and we will change the chip version to 3.0 because ESP32 chip version 3 supports secure boot 2. You have to check your hardware for that whether it supports or not. Once that is being done, we will go back to security features and give will simply select secure boot version 2. The secure book signs a book trigger on expert book and burn the few e views uh, itself on first book. Uh, if we check the allow potentially insecure option, we will see that we can enable JCAG debugging even after secure book is enabled. This is risky and it is advisable to not enable it in production devices.